Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, this is a great day. Today is August 21st, 2017. This is the day of the total solar eclipse. It's in the morning right now. I'm going to be headed out to some areas to do some prospecting and hopefully spend a couple days, maybe three days out there doing some mining for gold. So it should be a lot of fun. It's going to be beautiful. The weather's perfect. It's a little bit on the hot side probably, but it's pretty decent weather. I'm out here in the great American West and I'm going to show you some of the things I do. I've got all my gear. I've got all my tools. I've got my camping equipment. I've got my cooler with my food and I brought water out because the area that I'm headed is uh, it's completely dry. There's no water out there. So come on along and uh, let's have some fun. Right. <clears throat> All right. Well, it's cooled down a little bit. It's about 95 degrees now. And I had a chance to run a half an hour in one of the spots that I wanted to test. And because I brought everything for panning, because I brought the water, because I have all the tools I need, I'm going to go ahead and pan out this first run and uh, describe to you a little bit while I'm doing that. Um, basically, when you're running a dry washer, you are running a concentrator. You're taking the earth. If I can get it to focus for you. Okay, so there's the heavies, and I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to go through this again. You can see here, there's that little bit of gold. That's beautiful gold right there. Now, let me just, just for, for uh, scale, let me see here. Okay, so <clears throat> there you go. That's from one half hour with the dry washer. And this stuff here now, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna sniff this out with a sniffer. 
get it safely secured in my bottle. And then I'll look in this here, see if I missed anything. And if I did, I'll secure that in my bottle and then I'm on my way. Now I'll usually what I'll do is maybe two or two or three more areas before I decide where I want to spend the majority of my digging time. That's basically how it goes. Because of the circumstances as you can see now it's almost dark and it's 85 degrees out so it's gone down 10 degrees and uh, it's still pretty hot and um, what I did this time was no, normally I do a do a timed run with the dry washer now what I did here is I ran for instead of my normal routine, which is 30 minutes, I wanted a test that looked good to me. And rather than running, it would have taken me quite a while to dig out just out of that layer. All right, that's some, that's some heavy stuff there. It's not moving around real well. I'm going to go ahead and get over here to the smooth side of the pan. Mm. Now this, let's see here. Well, that's encouraging. Not good. Okay. See if you can see that. Okay, here we go. All right, so you can see there's little fines. It looks like uh, six or seven, maybe eight. There's probably some real fine stuff down in here. Again, I'm going to go through that stuff again more carefully, but this is just a quick pan. A relatively quick pan and there's a nice little piece there it looks like about maybe the size of uh, Lincoln's ear or his nose so, so there you go that's the second uh, that's the second area that I sampled
it's uh, 95 or close to 95 degrees now and uh, whoo I think it's about nine o'clock in the morning I'm not certain about that but anyway I got another sample I got sample number four see how that goes if you have any questions or you want to get a hold of me and uh, I hope to be able to do some things for my subscribers where I offer some some incentive to subscribe all right I'm getting down here so anyway the other ones are pretty pretty darn small it's all pretty small but there's some little pieces in there not so bad not so bad for a bucket and a half Okay, here we go. All right, so you can see right here, looks like about eight, nine, maybe 10 little pieces. One of them is a little bigger than the others. Okay, moments later, here I am with, this is the water from yesterday. You can see it's pretty well settled out. What I've done is I'm gonna put half of it in there. Now when you get down to this point, when you agitate the material like this, when I stratify it back and forth, what's going to happen is the lighter material is going to work its way to the top of that little pile. And so you'll have the blonde sands and the brown sands and, and these heavy stones in here, which I'm going to, I'm going to break, I'm going to rake them through the water with my finger. So they're the heaviest of the heaviest, and that's also where you're going to find the gold. I should be able to check and see here now. I don't see any color. I, don't I got some little green stones. Some pretty little green stones and uh, probably olivine. There's definitely black sand in there. Okay, I'm going to show you. Let's see here. Can't really 
you see the camera. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, now, you'd see gold up in here or in the black sand, you know, you'd see some gold. And I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing it, really any, even real fine. Okay, I did not do another sample. Um, I did the four samples that you saw, uh, you saw every one of them. And out of those four, um, number two was, was good because it had that one piece in it, which was bigger than all the rest. The trouble with that area is that it's a very narrow layer. There's not a whole lot of volume uh, in that spot. Uh, then there's uh, the third sample, which was pretty much a bust. Um, no color at all on that, so I can rule that out for next time. But number one and number four samples were pretty much equivalent in the type of gold, the, the amount of gold. Um, and out of the out of number one and number four, number one is quite a big uh, area. It's quite a big chunk of land that I mean, you know, it's it's approximately uh, thirty by sixty feet of thirty by sixty feet by five foot tall. I mean, there's a lot of material there that you know I could dry wash there for. A couple winters so anyway that's the lowdown on today I'm in the car I got I had the air conditioning on I just turned it off momentarily because I want to get going I want to get moving on the road I got everything packed up um, I got my whole camp broken down I looked around I picked up uh, you know odds and ends trash that um, other people had left here and I'm gonna head to another location hopefully um, hopefully there I can probably, I'm not sure if I'm going to pan and dry wash or just gather up, um, quarter inch minus to bring home. I've already mined there. I've already discovered a good layer at that location. And so I'm going to head over there. And if I indeed do dry wash and, um, and pan something out, I'll show you. Right now in the shade outside, it's 107, almost 108 degrees. And so I'm really thinking about just heading out. I was not anticipating it going to be this hot. And even though I've really tried to cover my, my face and use sunscreen and everything, it's hard to avoid the sun. Um, so and I had a shelter up here on my side of my vehicle. So I've gotten that. Uh, all that's taken down. I'm ready to move. I'm going to check out the other location. I may just check it out and head on out or uh, I'm certainly going to grab some quarter inch minus and I can just wait out the hot part of the day. Um, you know, just sit in the, I, I might know a place, a shady place I can go sit out the hottest part of the day and then you know, wait a few hours and then get some quarter inch minus to bring home from that good, that good layer that I know of. Um, but I'll tell you what, if you're out in an area like this, you know, it's, a, it's critical to have water. It's critical to have forethought and think about things that you might encounter, accidents, uh, antihistamines for, for bee stings, scorpion bites. But also, you have an air conditioning unit in this vehicle, and uh, that's a lifesaver. Because I could imagine if I was out here without this vehicle at this time of day, I would need to find a hole. I would need to find a tunnel or a mine or <laughs> a cave. You'd need to get underground, um, lay, lay by the side of a, a, a cut in the river or something like that where you can, you can have some shade because you've got to have some shade and you travel in the evening. But anyway, uh, it went well, and I'm gonna head over to the other area now, and uh, I'll check back in from time to time. All right, thanks.
it's extremely hot out. I got to the area I wanted to go to and I was able to get some uh, sandbags full of quarter minus, quarter inch minus uh, classified down from from the good spot where I've been where I've been before. Um, it's almost two and I'm gonna head out. I've been here, this is day three. Two nights, three days. Wasn't really ready for this this level of heat out here. I mean, you can imagine it's extremely dry, um, but it's super hot. But with this kind of heat, any sort of breakdown, you know, I'm pretty far from I'm pretty far from any roads, any uh, any pavement. So I think it's a good best call is to uh, pack up my, you know, get my things and, and head on out. Uh, it's 110 almost 111 in the shade outside and I literally feel like I've you know been walking through an oven <laughs> so it was a good trip and I may take a photo or two on the way home for the vlog and uh, and anyway thanks for coming along I'm glad you could join me and uh, um, I plan on doing this again with deserts. With deserts, I want to focus on the techniques used, detecting, dry washing, dry sampling, dry panning, um, using small recirculators, you know, when, when, when I can. I want to focus on the desert. I'm also going to have a series where I do the mountains. My dad and I have a claim up in the, in the mountains in uh, it, but, uh, on a river, on, a, on an active modern river, and there's placer gold in that area. And uh, so I want to do some films, some vlogs uh, up there as well. Not only about the prospecting, but about the camping and, uh, the, you know, cooking and, and just, uh, just being out there, you know, just being out there and doing it. And also, like I said earlier, probably some meteorite trips. I'd be interested in doing some meteorite trips. I'd be interested in doing some, like this time of year, I should be at the beach. I should be doing beach detecting. I should be doing bays, uh, metal detecting in the bays, in lakes, in water. So anyway, um, also hopefully I'll be able to put some travel, you know, add some travel in there while I'm doing these things. There's a lot of places I like to travel to and do some detecting um, for sure some detecting would be fun find some treasures so uh, all in all it was a good uh, a good a good trip uh, day three I'm headed out I did four samples and you saw all of those and then I I went to an area I had been before and that's kind of what I was trying to do at the other place I was trying to find a, a layer or a deposit or a bench at that other locality where I felt comfortable I could come back to and then either work for several days or possibly gather up some material to take home. So that's what I did and uh, I'm going to head on out. Thanks a, lot. Thanks a lot for coming along. Bye for now. there it got too hot and uh, yeah you know so I took off and I'm back now uh, what I did was with the sample that I 
with the with the material that I collected from the from the sample area number five. Um, what I did is I brought home unclassified, you know, uh, pay dirt right out of the layer, and I brought that home, and I ran it through my wet classifier or my wet concentrator. I've got a wet concentrator which I made that works pretty well for um, for concentrates. In this case, I used it on the the raw pay dirt. So I brought home several five gallon buckets of pay dirt from that particular layer. I went through one of them, which turned out to be about two thirds of a five gallon bucket. And I put it through my wet concentrator and uh, I ran it through, I ran it the whole, the whole sample entirely through. And now I've got it, I've got it here in this, in this bucket. So I'm going to, I'm gonna put it into the small pan. Put it in the small pan here. So the wet concentrator really gets rid of a lot of the a lot of the excess material, and so I end up with a really I end up with a super concentrate. Pretty much, it's black sand, and let's see if I can. It's really meant for, like I said, it's really meant to be, when I bring home concentrates, it's really meant to be used to go through the concentrates. Although I did make, still end up with some, some brown sand. Quite a bit of black sand. Quite a bit more than the first four samples from out there. I'm going to go ahead and put it right back down onto the smooth side of the pan. I want to get through the video rather quickly because it's hot enough out here where I am that my camera will shut off at a certain point. So I want to try to get through this video rather quickly if I can and show you what I found in the five. And I probably won't be going out there again until it cools down a bit more. It was hotter than I expected. There's a, uh, there's a few other areas here that aren't quite so far out. They're not out and they don't get quite as hot. So I'll probably do, my next video will probably be from one of those areas where I'll probably be doing dry washing again and uh, maybe some metal detecting, but primarily dry washing. So you can see there's a lot of black sand in comparison to those other areas. So. If you have a black sand magnet, that works pretty well. You don't need one though, because if you get all the gold in the bottom corner, you put all the gold in the bottom edge down here. If there is gold, and then you, you, you get it down on that bottom corner, and then you tilt your pan back, and I can see some gold. Oh yeah. Oh, that's much better. Tilt your pan back, and you can move that up I use my finger. I use my finger because remember, I'm going to get the sniffer bottle. And any small stuff that I miss that happens to be down in this black sand, I'm going to go through that again. But for the video, I, um, for the video, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I want you to see the gold, so I'm not going to just sniff it up into the sniffer bottle like I normally do. You can actually tap that pan. and get, Oh, this is great. This is, this is what I was hoping for in, in those other areas. In those other four samples. And you have to understand that this is from about a two thirds to maybe three quarters of a five gallon bucket of pay dirt out of that particular layer. Oh, I can feel the pieces underneath my finger. Nice pieces. 
It's what I found there once before. That's a nice spot. I like that spot. Right now I'm just going to call that spot number five. All right. Well, I can show you. Keep in mind, I'll be going through this at least once more, probably once more. See if there's any specs that I missed. And I'll use a sniffer bottle and get them out. And then this stuff right here, I can sniff that right up. But I'm going to show you on the camera. Should have brought a penny. I didn't bring a penny out with me. Let's see. I think I got one. I think I have a coin. I'm not sure if it's a penny. But I think I got a coin in here. And the camera here. This is from an ancient river out in the desert. And that's from about... That's from about um, three quarters of a five gallon bucket right there so all right then so uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope to be doing some more videos whether I'm gold prospecting in the mountains or the desert or if I'm metal detecting on a beach or looking for meteorites um, more to come thanks again take care